Welcome everyone to 7 Minutes or Less, talking about the shows you love or want to get into. Today we will be talking about 24 Season 1. On my show, when I talk about any first season, I will not be giving out spoilers, major narrative twists, or deaths, but I will be talking about characters, the acting, the story itself, and how it holds up throughout its runtime. 24 is a crime drama that unfolds like a political thriller and uses the real-time narrative that covers 24 consecutive hours over the course of each season. Season. Out of the nine seasons, eight of them have 24 episodes, and the ninth only has 12. The spin-off, 24 Legacy, which I consider a season 10, only has 12 episodes as well. The initial nine seasons follow federal agent Jack Bauer and his family, affiliates included and not limited to people he has never met, all affected by a terrorist attack that is being executed from the time the show starts and continues throughout the day. We often see Jack Bauer either thwarting the attack attack only to find the people behind it, contingency plans in case of plan A goes awry, and people close to Jack either being involved from the get-go, turned evil after a time, or loses those he loves close to him. Jack Bauer's persona is not always well received. He has a ends justify the means approach with brutal ways of getting the job done. This includes means of torture to extract information out of people, taking members of well-meaning citizens and using them for risky operations, or people who are on the wrong side of the law and take their families as leverage. This season in particular is all very tame compared to the later seasons, which we'll be exploring when we get to it. The show itself follows multiple story arcs at once. At midnight, as the show starts, a credible threat calls in Jack, Nina Myers, Jamie Farrell, and Tony Almeida into CTU to protect the life of Senator David Palmer. The Counterterrorism Unit, CTU, in Los Angeles is a government building tasked with thwarting terrorist plots. Not only that, Jack is informed that there is an element with inside the agency that will sabotage everyone's efforts to protect Palmer. Jack not only has to worry about a mole within the agency, protect Palmer at all costs, but also find the whereabouts of his daughter Kim who snuck out just moments before getting called in. This leaves Jack's wife Terry to go find her with limited resources and barely a clue on how to find Kim. Senator David Palmer isn't some name to a face that we haven't seen when mentioned. Around the same time Jack is called in, we are introduced to David as a devout father and loving husband running for president. When he is alerted of the threat, it's only a mere hindrance to the real troubles he is focused on. Much like Jack and his family, David is alerted to a threat of his own that may jeopardize his candidacy, and the people involved may be closer to him than he may think. This affects his wife, Sherry, and two kids, Keith and Nicole, as an event seven years ago resurfaces. As both Jack and David's stories unfold, you find out with them how deep their rabbit holes truly go. Every character will be put to the test without a moment to rest as the terrorist plot and personal plot will give them a run for their lives. The first 13 episodes of this season, which we'll call the first act, focuses on Jack and his efforts to keep his personal life and work life separate, with those walls coming down each hour that passes. David and his wife Sherry work together to understand how these past events will affect them in the coming election and as a family. The mercenaries orchestrating this whole thing are also followed as well, and their involvement become greater and greater, making the situations more dire. The first act does an excellent job of telling the story with enough prowess to give us some of the finest acting to come to television. The production value is extremely well handled, as everyone feels in the moment, and there isn't a character wasted. Kiefer Sutherland and Dennis Haysbert are the standouts, for sure, followed by Leslie Hope, Elisha Cuthbert, and Penny Johnson Gerald. The 11th episode, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., stand out the most to me, and marks as one of my favorite episodes through throughout all 24 episodes. It's the pivotal moment in any chess game where the relationships are tested, the momentum is moving forward, and the music, naturally, is on point. No one is useless in that episode, and everyone has something to do. When it comes to the last 11 episodes, however, I must say it does take a small dip. The season is still great, do not get me wrong, but the next few episodes do slow down to allow our characters to breathe, which is a good thing. But it does get a little melodramatic at parts. 
to where the characters can come off a little whiny and oblivious. And I'd say, without spoilers, the storyline that begins to test your patience, possibly, if you don't have a problem with it, that's fine, it's a lot to do with Terry and Kim's arc. It isn't terrible, but there are a few moments where the story doesn't do much to keep things moving, and the writers kind of make decisions that make you scratch your head because it looks like they're just trying to grasp at straws to keep everyone busy and allot it to the runtime of the episode to whatever hours they had left. The real highlight of it all, though, is Jack and David when it comes to their relationship. Eventually, it's made aware of their existence to one another, and when it comes to the last four hours of this day, alliances are revealed, traitors and shocking twists are abound. The last hour will have you wondering how it's all going to end. And when it's done, you're craving more. And what will the next season hold? After all, it did get eight more seasons. At the end of the day, this is one of the strongest seasons throughout its tenure on television. It sets up future seasons while being its own thing and without completely alluding to world building to ensure its future. It gives you just enough. Repetitive storylines are prominent by its latter half, but it dives into unique relationships and character-driven moments to show you how dire everything is. I highly recommend this season. All right, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. If you've seen 24, or if you are interested in seeing it, did this review help? Let me know down in the comments. Be kind, be reasonable, and let's talk. If you like this and wanna see more, Help out by subscribing, commenting, and liking. Stay tuned for more reviews, and as always, until next time.